During the days of the Cherokee raids in 1776, obviously the settlers needed protection and Davidson's Fort, which sat right here on what's now the Mountain Gateway Museum grounds, was the main place that they went to for protection. There were a few other scattered fortifications around the Old Fort region that were basically people's homes that had been better equipped to service places of refuge. But this was a military outpost and so it afforded uh, much more safety than some of the other little forts. The fort was built in September and October of 1776. The land that it was built on was owned by Samuel Davidson. According to the Davidson family, the fort was named after John Davidson, whose grave is about a mile due east of here. His whole family, except one daughter, was killed by a Cherokee raid in the summer of 76. The militia that gathered here came from all over Western North Carolina and constituted the biggest militia in the history of the Revolutionary War. There was 2,700 men mustered here at Davidson's Fort. Uh, it was called Davidson's Fort or Upper Fort or Rutherford's Fort at that time, uh, different names, but it was the same location. The, uh, the militia that uh, gathered, like I said, was 2,700 strong. Rutherford took 2,500 men on the Rutherford Trace. They left from this fort going to battle the Cherokee. They went up the Catawba River Valley, crossed over into the Swannanoa Valley, went over on in toward Murphy, circled around and came back. Their action actually took the Cherokee out of the war for the British. There was never another uh, uh, event or a raid that was significant enough to uh, warrant military action. It held Cornwallis in the South much longer than he intended to be here. He was in South Carolina and in North Carolina for a year or more longer than he wanted to be. He couldn't leave his western flank exposed to this very successful militia that was stationed here at Davidson's Fort. So uh, it held him here that long, which gave Washington time to regroup and rearm and actually made a huge difference in the outcome of the Revolutionary War. If Cornwallis had moved north into Virginia when he wanted to, George Washington probably would not have had a chance. So the militia that gathered here uh, played a major role in the forming of our country. It actually helped us win the Revolutionary War. Davison's Fort is being reconstructed as closely as we can possibly do it to what the original might have looked like. We have no detailed uh, blueprints or uh, documentation of the exact fort. It could have been just a fortified house or it could have been a major uh, fort stockade. With 2,700 men here, we you know, uh, feel like it was pretty good size. It was more than just one building, we uh, feel sure of that. What we have done is looked at other forts that were built in the same time period and copied their construction. So. This is a time period structure. It's not as big as some, it's bigger than others, it's kind of in between. And uh, we're trying to keep the construction as authentic as possible, as, the, as much so as the building inspector will let us do. But uh, the, uh, the fort itself, the palisade walls, there's 100 feet by 75 feet inside the stockade fence. The, uh, the block house on the corner, uh, is big enough to hold uh, several men and activities. Uh, there will be other buildings in the future that's coming onto the site. We're going to have a lot of things going on. There will be a trading post and a blacksmith shop and all kind of uh, shops and whatnot of activity, activities of daily living here at the fort. So uh, we want you to come out and see all these activities. It's going to be uh, something ongoing every day we're open. There will be activities going on, demonstrations, um, uh, reenactments and that type of thing happening on a daily basis and all those activities again are, are period uh, everything that we do is what they would have been doing in 1776 as part of their daily life.